In this video, we are going to be talking about how to apply ceramic coatings from start to finish. Now let's get straight into it. What's going on? So glad you guys are here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you are a professional auto detailer who wants to become more successful and profitable in your business or just a car enthusiast who wants to improve your detailing ability, then definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button right below this video. So in this video, we are talking about how to apply ceramic coatings. I'm going to explain briefly what ceramic coatings are, but just understand that this is going to be a little bit longer form content, longer video, and this video is not intended to go into detail exactly what a ceramic coating is, but it is more how to apply it and actually watching the application of a ceramic coating from preparation to doing it to finishing. So before we do that, let me briefly overview what a ceramic coating is. Ceramic coatings are kind of the new thing, the new rage in the auto detailing industry. People love them. Some people actually hate them. Everybody has a different opinion on kind of ceramic coatings. Should you use them? Should you not use them? But ceramic coatings, though they're fairly new to the auto detailing industry, it's not really a new concept altogether. A lot of times you can even see ceramic coated pieces, tools, even like kitchenware. For example, there are certain non-stick pans and pots that are ceramic coated because that it helps them kind of repel certain things. It helps them not get food stuck to them. So ceramic coatings though, um, we kind of think of them as this intense thing that kind of repels everything from car paint. They're not necessarily as intense as we think. You could, you know, for example, find them in things in the kitchen. You can find them in certain things in the hardware stores where things are ceramic coated, they're water repelled they're UV protected, all these sort of things. So it's not really a new concept altogether. But when we're talking about ceramic coatings in the auto detailing industry, we're talking about basically two different groups. And once again, this is an overview. And so no, this is not always true. This is not 100% all the time, but for the most part, I'm speaking in generalities right now. So this ceramic coating right here is actually called OptiCoat, okay? OptiCoat is one of the major kind of uh, producers, companies, kind of manufacturers ceramic coating auto detailing industry products. Um, the product that I'm going to be using today is actually, I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly, it's a foreign company, but it's Nasiol or Nasiol or N-A-S-I-O-L. And we're going to be testing this one out today. But ceramic coatings go further than just the paint. You can also have ceramic coatings for the glass. You can have ceramic coatings for wheels and all that sort of stuff. And so what exactly is a ceramic coating? Well, I think the easiest way to explain a ceramic coating is a ceramic coating coating is basically like a new and improved clear coat on a car that actually sits on top of the clear coat. And in some cases, saying it sits on top of the clear coat isn't even correct because there are coatings that actually blend with the paint itself and they kind of become one single entity or barrier. And so those, though these are not actually a, a literal clear coat, they do act a lot like a clear coat. The reason people like these things so much is because a clear coat is only so thick. So if you can imagine like the wrapper around a post-it note pack, that's about how thick clear coat is. Whereas with a ceramic coating, a lot of times they're made of silicon dioxide or they're made of um, silicon carbide. And so if you think about it chemically, it would be SIC or SIO2. And glass is actually silicon dioxide. And so some people call these glass coatings for that reason. People have different preferences of which ones they like better. Some people say certain ones last longer, certain ones give a different different kind of glossy depth look. So everybody has their own preference. But the main reason why ceramic coatings are becoming very popular is because not only are they UV protection, um, not only do they protect against the elements, you know, snow, rain, uh, dirt, you know, all that stuff that gets attached to your car, but they last a very long time depending on the kind of coating you're using. They can last normally anywhere from like two to seven years. And because they last so long and the nature of what they are, they're so thick, they um, actually act kind of as a stronger clear coat. Because all these properties make up a ceramic coating, it is a very expensive sort of application. It's an expensive service because of the level of intensity that one has to go through in order to apply one. So let's just briefly describe what I'm going to have to do to even apply a ceramic coating to this Audi. Well, number one, in order to apply ceramic coating, first things first, I'm going to have have to wash the car. So washing the car is going to include everything from removing surface dirt to cleaning the wheels, cleaning the tires, the wheel wells, debugging it, all that sort of stuff. Next, I'm going to have to clay bar the car because obviously I'm going to have to remove any of those contaminants because 
A ceramic coating seals everything in, and so I want to make sure that nothing is on the paint except for the paint itself. Otherwise, anything I miss is literally going to be sealed in, and a ceramic coating is not just like a wax or a sealant that can just be taken off, and then you can clean it and then reapply it. These things are a bear to actually remove, and the point is kind of a permanent application. They're, they call them a permanent coating because they last so long, and so the prep stage in this this application is going to be the number one most important thing you do. So secondly, I'm clay barring the paint. Then I'm going to go around with my Citrol degreaser and I'm just going to get off anything that's still there that I can visually see, road tar, bugs, anything that I didn't get in those first two passes. Then after that Citrol degreaser and I've kind of removed everything from the paint, I'm going to use an IPA wash, an isopropyl alcohol wash, 50-50 dilution of distilled water and alcohol, and I'm going to strip the paint of any waxes, any sealants, anything, any chemical that touched the paint, so all I have is just a bare surface. Then and after that, I'm actually going to have to polish the paint. Now, depending on the condition of the car you're applying the ceramic coating to is going to determine the kind of polishing you're going to have to do. In this case, I'm only doing a one-step polish and we're using a finishing polish because this car is in very good condition. There are very few scratches, very few swirls, and so it doesn't require a two-stage polish. And so I'm going to be doing a one-stage polish. Now, I'm doing that because, once again, the ceramic coating seals everything into the paint, and so I have to make sure that I'm removing the maximum amount, the maximum percentage of swirls and scratches that I possibly can before I seal everything in. Then after I do the polishing, I'm going to go ahead and use um, either, I can use actually another IPA wash. I do that very often, but a lot of ceramic coatings actually come with a preparation lubricant, a preparation spray that you will apply to the paint, but a lot of times an IPA wash will uh, suffice, especially with ceramic coatings that are more retail grade, not like OptiCoat. I'm talking about uh, more retail grade kind of ceramic coatings that you can order online that anybody can kind of get, that any sort of car enthusiast can get their hands on. Doesn't require the same kind of products to prepare as something maybe like OptiCoat or um, someone who has to be licensed to apply it requires. Then finally, when all of that preparation is done, the actual ceramic coating is going to go on the car. That is basically the overview of all the steps that have to be taken in order to properly apply a ceramic coating. Now I know that was a lot of information, so don't be overwhelmed if you feel like I just vomited all this stuff up on you and you're not going to be able to remember it because we're about to actually hands-on walk step by step through this. But before we do that, I want to explain. I have already washed this car. I've already taken some citral degreaser to it. I've already clay barred the car. I've already washed it with an IPA wash a couple days ago. But what I'm going to do now is actually do another IPA wash again. So this video in particular, I have done several of the preparation stages already. So what I'm about to do is do another IPA wash to remove any dust, any kind of little small dirt particles so once again we can strip it down and then we're going to walk through polishing and then we're going to walk through exactly what it is to apply the ceramic coating itself. So let's go ahead and take the IPA wash to the whole car, the windows included, and then we'll come back after that. Okay, so now the whole paint has been treated with the IPA wash and the dust has been gotten rid of. Now let's go ahead and unbox this ceramic coating and check out the directions and see what's inside. Okay, so what does this ceramic coating come with? Well, number one, it comes with the ceramic coating itself. It comes with an application, or it actually comes with an, what we call an initial buffing, buffing towel, and then a final buffing towel or polishing towel. And it comes with a little um, nozzle here to stick onto the ceramic coating bottle where it gets it out in just the right amounts. And then it comes with three applicator pads. Now, as a general rule, I work in kind of like two by two areas of the door, of the hood, any sort of like bigger area. Uh, Area. Of course, the bumpers are going to be different, but it's kind of a general rule of thumb with ceramic coatings. I'm going to work in a two by two area. But first, of course, before we apply the ceramic coating, we need to polish this Audi. So check out how I'm going to polish it, what pads I'm going to use, what polisher I'm going to use, and what tools I'm going to use. So first things first, I am going to be using my Rupes Bigfoot. Now the pad I'm going to use is actually just a microfiber finishing pad with about three quarters of an inch of foam interface. This is very soft microfiber. 
some of you guys are like, why are you finishing with a microfiber pad? Because some people have it in their head that in the auto detailing industry, microfiber pads are always for cutting. But the truth is that's just not true. There are plenty of pads out there that are microfiber pads that are literally dedicated for finishing. And so this is a pad from Stay Fresh Car Care. It's a uh, smaller detailing company, smaller detailing products company. I actually have four of these same exact pads because I'm going to need these pads in order to get this car done because this Rupes buffer is so powerful, it heats up the pad very quickly. And so I like to change and kind of interchange between all four so that the glue doesn't start coming undone between the foam and the uh, microfiber and then ruin my pad. So I let some cooling time, I switch to another pad, I keep going. Then the polish I'm gonna be using for this car is going to be Meguiar's 205. The reason I'm using this is because once again, this car is kept in very good condition, has very minimal swirls, very minimal scratching. So I don't need anything more than this. And so I'm gonna be able to take care of this all in one step with just this polish. So let's go ahead and get into the polishing. So I'm gonna keep the speed of the polisher between like two and three. Anything over like three and a half is just overkill for this paint. And this machine is so intense and so kind of well built. There's just no need to go over that speed with m most jobs really. Now I want you guys to see how much polish I'm using because though it is a little generous, it's not that much. And I'm gonna be doing this entire back half. Now some of you are wondering why I have not taped off the paint. Only reason I haven't taped it off is because number one, I'm not gonna be burning any edges with this polisher and with this paint in particular. Number one, I'm letting common sense lead. And number two, this is a DA polisher and though it's really powerful, with DAs in general, it is very difficult to burn an edge. And so with the proper experience and then just some common sense, I'm not gonna be burning any edges. And number three, this DA in particular, this Rupes Bigfoot is really good at not slinging. I just like adore this polisher. I've been using it for a couple months now. It's awesome. And so I'm not gonna have to deal with a lot of sling or anything like that. Now, once again, I'm gonna put the speed on about two and a half to three and a half, nothing big. And I'm not gonna, this isn't a video to show you guys exactly how to polish paint, so I'm not gonna like let you guys see all this. I'm gonna speed it up. But once again, you guys get the basic idea. Okay, so we are finally finished polishing the paint. So I'm gonna take you guys around to show you kind of the exactly what it looks like before we put the ceramic coating on it. And just so you guys know, after I got done polishing, I actually went ahead and I treated the paint with the IPA wash again and a totally new, never used microfiber towel. I did that because, well, number one, the IPA wash has to be used after you polish to get rid of any polishing residue, any chemical residue, anything that could possibly be on the paint. That's why you have to use the IPA wash because I'm about to seal everything in and so everything needs to be removed. Once again, an IPA wash does work as a pre-ceramic coat prep, but some people prefer like specific ceramic coating preps. Um, a lot of times the kits will come with those. This one did not. The IPA wash is more than enough, I assure you. And then of course I used a totally new microfiber towel for obvious reasons because I just polished everything, just removed any hairline scratches small, you know, tiny top coat swirls. And so if I were to use a used microfiber towel, I do risk abrading the paint at a very small level, but a level nonetheless. And so I use a totally new microfiber towel because I don't want any towel that has touched anything before. That way I know nothing is on it. And so let's go ahead and check out the paint. We'll kind of start from the front. And we do have these kind of fluorescent lights up here, but it doesn't help a ton. But you guys can tell, I mean, this paint looks like ridiculously awesome. And even under LEDs, um, the level of swirling is so minimal. Unless you do this every single solitary day, you would have no idea that there's even a single swirl on the paint. So just gonna go ahead and kind of show you guys in the sunlight, it kind of helps with the lighting. So we're gonna walk around the other side as well. This paint is what I like to call 
totally virgin paint. It's like nothing is on it. It's almost like it's never been touched because of the polishing, the clay barring, the cleaning that's taken place. And so this is the kind of condition that the paint must be in before you apply a ceramic coating. It must be perfection. Now this has taken several hours to get to this point. Once again, this is why ceramic coatings are more expensive. The ceramic coating itself does take some good time, but the preparation stage is really what takes so long. So let's go ahead and get into applying the ceramic coating. Now, once again, each coating has specific directions on how that specific coating is supposed to be applied. So just to give you guys a quick rundown, this kind of more tighter weave microfiber towel is gonna to be used for the initial buffing for taking the ceramic coating off. This polishing microfiber towel and very, very fine microfibers is going to be used for actually the polishing part or a quote, you know, the final buffing part in order to get that shine and to take off any residue that's left for that specific section. This ceramic coating is fast drying and so you don't want the ceramic coating to dry on the paint before you can buff it off. This is very serious stuff, so you have to kind of be on top of what you're doing. Each section has a 30 second application time and then a 30 second leave to dry time and then buffing it off. So you don't even want this to be on the paint for more than around a minute or you're gonna find yourself in some trouble. Once again, just to repeat, you guys are wondering how much you need to put on there. You're gonna put just enough to fill this like top circle right here and that's enough for that two by two section so what I'm gonna do is apply it in an S pattern to actually disperse it and then I'm gonna do a crosshatch pattern like up and down and then left to right in order to disperse that S pattern that I did uh, evenly around the paint. You want to make sure that you're dispersing it evenly because once again, this is kind of like a layer of glass that you're putting on the paint and so it can get uneven if you don't apply it and you're not intentional while you're doing it correctly. Make sure you go over in a crosshatch pattern many different times so that you're applying it very, very evenly. So here we go, this is what this looks like. Okay, so you guys could see I was doing that quickly. I know I sped it up, but even in like real time, I was removing it very quickly because once again, if I let it dry, it'll dry unevenly. It'll look kind of splotchy. And so I'm trying to do all this while it's wet. 30 second application, 30 second removal, not wanting to leave it on the paint for more than 60 seconds at a time. So you guys saw how that worked. I'll try to zoom in so you guys can kind of see. I know it's difficult. We're gonna go around at the end, obviously, and show the whole paint. So I've done this kind of top, uh, top left or right section, depending on where you're standing. So I'm gonna do this bottom section and then the two across there as well. So, this is what all of that looks like. Okay guys, so now the hood is done. I'm gonna take you guys in afterwards to get a better angle, but you guys can see, hood is done. I was being kind of fast and I was running back and forth, once again, not letting it dry. Another thing, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this, but you guys notice that I'm in a garage, and though there is sun coming in, I have half closed the garage so that none of the paint is exposed to the sun. This is not something that can be applied in the sun, and I know on my channel a lot of times, I'm like, oh, well, I'm a mobile detailer, I have to apply things in the sun, so even though the manufacturer's directions say don't do it, I'm gonna do it anyways. This is not one of those times. This is not just some wax that, you know, is gonna streak. This is a serious process, serious application. You cannot apply this in the sun. It's gonna flash dry. You're not gonna be able to get it off. It's gonna dry unevenly. It's gonna be horrible. So it has to be in a shaded area, in a garage, half close the garage. Eventually I'm gonna to have to fully close the garage because the sun is coming down and it's actually shining in. So once again, I'm in the shade. But guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this paint and we're gonna come back in, check out the final look. I'm also gonna hit areas like the tail lights and the headlights because yes, this can be applied to the plastic. And of course, this is gonna add awesome protection to the headlights as well. So let's get into it. Also, 
just want to say something real fast, guys. You can see as I'm applying this, I'm being very strategic in the kind of leveling and the pressure I'm putting. I'm putting a line right down the middle because I'm only doing this side, that, you know, that time that I just did. I only did this right side. So I put kind of like a line of demarcation right here so that I didn't go past it. With these things, you do need to be more strategic. You need to be more specific. It's not like a wax that you can just spray and kind of wipe off the overspray. I need to see where I stopped and where I started so that I don't overlap again so that when I come into this left side, it's a totally uncoated side. I'm not overlapping. And then this way, as I go slowly in this crosshatch pattern like this, I'm applying it very evenly. I'm not getting it over the lines that I'm not trying to go over, not getting it on the headlight when I'm not trying to. So once again, it's just tedious, tedious, tedious process. But again, that's why this is such a high kind of commodity item. It's why it's so uh, priced so highly because it just takes a long time. So this is like six hours now, okay? So this is, uh, once again, tedious process, but Final result's gonna be amazing. You're gonna love yourself when you do it the right way. So it's one of those things that do it the first, do it right the first time because you're just gonna thank yourself. <laughs>also just a quick note as you're doing this because the lid is off of this thing and if you spill this on the garage floor it's gonna be like a sheet of glass that forms on the floor so whenever I get done pouring this I put it out in the corner where I know I'm not gonna hit it with my heel or something like that so I make sure I don't spill it Okay guys, so after a long day of working, and you guys can tell it looks like I you know, jumped in a pool, I'm so sweaty, the car is finally done. So let me go ahead and take you guys around. Now yes, it's in the garage, the lights are on, but they're not very strong, and the sun is shining a little bit, so the lighting will be maybe a little rough, but I wanna show you guys the final result. We're gonna get a bunch of different angles. So here we go. I don't know how much the camera picks up as far as like seeing a huge difference visually from the ceramic coating and then from like maybe just a, a sealant or a wax that's really nice as well because of course the camera can be kind of flattering or different, not flattering at different times. But the ceramic coating is on there nonetheless and I kind of want to get in the light so we can see like, you guys can see there aren't any swirls. Like we go down, there's no swirls. Like the paint was in such good condition before I started that with the finishing polish it just like brought it to that level 10 and of course you guys can see with the lighting yes there is sort of that glossy glow but once again i don't know how deep it is if you guys can really see it in person in person it literally looks like incredible i mean it's like fantastic this is probably about this was about a seven hour job total six and a half to seven hour job and the paint was already prepped basically before i got here so that should tell you guys a little bit about how long these take and kind of how intense they are so i'll go around one more time and then uh we will wrap this thing up. I want to remind you guys about the product that I used, which was from Nasiol or Nasiol. It's not uh, English, so I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but it is a fantastic product. I'm going to hook up links to this product and to their website and all that sort of stuff down in the description box below. Check out um, that company because they definitely have some awesome products. Um, this went on, came off very nicely. With ceramic coatings, they are a little bit you know, more difficult to get off than other things for obvious reasons, but as far as ceramic coatings go this was a very nice one so definitely check those uh, links out in the description box below I don't make any commission or anything it's just a really really good product so guys there it is from start to finish I want to do a quick overview so you guys understand the step-by-step -step process just to conclude number one washed the paint number two I clay barred the paint number three I took citral degreaser got any contaminants off number four I didn't actually rec record this because it was in the prep stage and I didn't record the prep stage but I did use some iron X which is going to take off those contaminants um, the kind of a chemical cleaner that's going to take off contaminants and it's kind of like a clay bar, but anything the clay bar missed is going to be picked up by that. Um, number five, I used an IPA wash before I started polishing. Number six, I did a final polish, just a finishing polish, because that's all this paint required. Number six, I followed up with an IPA wash to remove any polish or any chemical that could have possibly been left on the paint. And then obviously after that, we applied the ceramic coating, to buffed off the ceramic coating. 
and we are left with this and now everything is sealed in. Now this specific ceramic coating has to sit for about 48 hours and so yes it can sit in the sun, I just don't want it to sit outside because it's going to get dust, pollen and stuff. So it's going to sit in the garage for 48 hours before it even gets driven outside. It can't touch water, can't touch any chemicals, so you need to be aware of that. So it's going to cure for about 48 hours and then it's going to be good to go for um, years. And so guys that is basically my simple step by step process of how exactly I apply a ceramic coating. So I hope this video added some value to your life. I hope it was everything you wanted it to be and more. Of course, there's going to be many more ceramic coating videos on this channel. I'm going to set up an entire playlist for ceramic coating videos. So this is just one. I will go into detail about other stuff in future videos. So this is just a short overview. Once again, it's a how-to. It's not an in-depth thing. So take that for what it's worth. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hook up all that stuff in the YouTube comments below because I always read those and I'm sure to get back to you guys as fast as I can. And if you guys are new to the Wilson Auto Detail community, then definitely consider subscribing because I come out with videos all the time just like this on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more, all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more successful and profitable in their businesses. And on this channel, I share the same strategies that turned my auto detailing business into a full-time income with only part-time hours. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah.